Hi, I'm Ali, Salon Director at the Head Gardener Hair Salon in Inverness, and I'm delighted to be sponsoring this brilliant new podcast called Lump. It's honest, raw, challenging, funny, and very, very sweary. But let's face it, cancer is a bit bloody sweary. One last thing, make sure you rate, like, and share Lump wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks a million, and over to Penny. This is not a pissing contest. I'm back in no man's land, drifting through the days between one appointment and the next. My memory is now totally shot. Each day I wake with a jolt. The first thing I remember is I have cancer. After that, I'm all at sea. I struggle to piece together what day it is, where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. But life does not stop and no one presses pause just because you have cancer. So each day I push myself up and down through the process of making packed lunches and sorting PE kit and vaguely making decisions about dinner. It feels strange having to write everything down so I don't forget. This is not like me, but I feel like I'm floating in a cloud. I wonder if this is what dementia feels like. Work has become more difficult. I'm now too vague to feel I'm useful. I feel guilty about how little I'm contributing, and I think I should officially take time out, but then that feels like I'm a quitter, and I feel guilty about that too. I'm honest about how bad my memory is and I tell colleagues to please remind me about anything they need me to do and keep reminding me. I realise my memory must be just a tell for how stressed I am. I expect it leeches out in other ways too, but forgetting is the most obvious just now. On Friday, my phone bleeped a reminder that I was to meet Al, a fellow cancer sufferer, or, as his wonderful wife Kirsten puts it, cancer warrior. We drove to Nairn Beach through rain and sleet, then drank half-decent coffee in a cafe before walking Al's dog Jura along the shore in the wind. We shared our experiences and compared notes, mine so new, still blinking in the headlamps, his, now three years old and more knotty and solid. There's a freedom in talking to a fellow fighter. You don't have to season your chat with positive can-do statements. It's more down-to-earth and gritty. Al says to keep your horizons close, almost as close as you dare, so you're not setting false goals and overreaching. He's perfecting the art of living in the moment, the minute, the day. I wanted to talk to Al because I'm so scared of being boxed in and I knew that he'd gone from being an active, super-fit lover of outdoor life to wrestling daily with a life-limiting diagnosis. We laugh at the shocking reality of realising we're mortal. He says he never wanted to know what the statistics suggest in terms of his own life expectancy. But then recently, he'd felt the need to find out, so he looked it up, but he wished he hadn't. This news sits between us for a moment. It's on the tip of my tongue to ask, how long? but I decide not to. Somehow, to give it oxygen would make it more real, and I don't want Al's life expectancy to be a fixed figure. I don't want to encourage it out into the light. He offers me an olive branch I can understand, and shares that the first cycle he did on his electric bike when he was in remission, just a short loop round Granton, was the best bike ride of his life. I put that image in my pocket, knowing I'll need to reach for it later when I'm in recovery and well enough to bitch at how much my life-saving surgery will have removed from me. Al knows he will lose his war eventually and says that they'll have to get to a point where they start preparing for the inevitable but that they're not ready to prepare just yet. Right now. Right at this moment. Because... I don't know how fast and far my own cancer has spread. Our situation seems 
and is much worse than mine. But this is not a cancer pissing contest. There's no competition here between who has the shortest straw. Because, as we keep saying to each other over and over again, each experience is different. Each cancer story is unique. And that mantra of every story is different is one I find being uttered on a loop as I meander through this bizarre cancer landscape. It's there in my consultant's gentle warning not to overread the stories of others when he sends me off back into no man's land to wait for the next tests or results. It was there on Saturday night when we sat and absorbed the stories of a dozen or so cancer warriors at a charity event. We'd booked a table at the event months ago. It was being pulled together by a good friend in support of four major local charities, all with a strong link to cancer. Little did we know how personally poignant the night would prove once it eventually came round. I sat and watched the big screen and tried to look brave as I absorbed the story of a woman with an 11-year-old who was battling cancer and of another who'd recently lost her own breast cancer fight, leaving a four-year-old son behind. All the while, David held my hand and whispered, that's not you, in my ear. So I nod and I smile and I try to look like I believe them when the many friends with us repeatedly say, you'll be fine. But none of us has a crystal ball. I've realised they're saying it as much for themselves as for me, so I've stopped wondering how they know I'll be fine. And it feels dreadful to admit it, but as I sit and listen to all the other cancer sufferers and their stories, all I can think of is that I don't want to be like them. I don't want to find out that I've got a bigger battle ahead than anticipated. I don't want to need to lean on the services of the beautiful and compassionate Maggie staff. I don't ever want to find out how wonderful the hospice team are. I want to lose this pissing contest hands down. I want to be embarrassed by what a fuss I made over nothing. I want this all to be a mountain made out of a molehill. Hi, this is Emma Jane from The Head Gardener. If you're enjoying Lump Podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And don't forget to leave a review wherever you get your podcasts and share it with everyone you know. Let's face it, cancer affects everyone around us in one way or another. We hope you're enjoying listening to Lump as much as we all are. So next time you're in the salon, tell us how much you're loving Lump Podcast and we'll give you a free gift. Coming up in the next episode... I don't quite know how I'm supposed to react or feel or behave, but I sense I'm not quite doing the dance expected of me. Maybe another of the paradoxical joys of cancer is all bets are off. Lump is written and presented by Penny Stewart and produced by Adventurous Audio. Mm-hmm.